I never liked yogurt growing up. I still don't like it, but it is an important cultural food item. So today we're gonna break down yogurt. The what, the how, and the where. <laughs> yogurt isn't new by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, there's evidence of it being eaten in 6000 BC, which is totally bonkers to believe that people were eating yogurt in 6000 BC. That's nuts. How would they have had it? Well, they certainly didn't have uh, cute little cups with a foil lid on it. No, they probably had it by accident because they were milking their cows as they were nomadic tribes people. And um, if it was warm outside and you had milked your cow and you put it in a, I don't know, a stone bucket overnight, did they have buckets? You probably didn't have a stone bucket. That would be very heavy. You put it in a bucket overnight, it's warm out. Well, when it's warm, the friendly bacteria that live in the milk actually can start growing and they can start eating. They don't go to sleep. They start to eat the sugar in the milk and when they eat the sugar in the milk, they ferment it. And when milk gets fermented by bacteria, it turns into a semi-solid gel, which is the chemistry term for yogurt. These days when you hit the store, there are so many yogurts to pick from, it's super confusing. So first let's talk about basically what is yogurt again. Yogurt is milk that has been fermented by the addition of microbacteria that eat sugar and turn it into something tangy and spoonable. But that milk, right in the middle, that main ingredient, can come from anything. It used to just be from cows, but now we can get milks from all these kinds of alternative sources, and you can make yogurt out of any of those. So your first decision is, what kind of milk do you want your yogurt made from? If you pick the alternative route, you can get almond milk yogurt, you can get coconut milk yogurt, you can get soy milk yogurt, you can get cashew milk yogurt. All of these alternatives are terrific for people who have dairy allergies. The thing you should know is that when you make yogurts out of alternative milks, they're a little thinner than regular yogurt. So the companies generally add some sort of thickener or stabilizer back in to get you that really nice, glossy, spoonable texture. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <gasps> because we're gonna talk about cows now. No, seriously though. Um, then you get to talk about the milks that come from animals. You can get milk from sheep, goats, cows, yaks. And yes, all of those milks can be made into yogurt. Now, once you pick a milk, if you're in the animal category, the next thing you've gotta decide is, how much fat do you want left in the final product? If we pick cow's milk yogurt, you can see here, I've got some whole milk yogurt and you also have low fat yogurt. The thing you wanna remember again, if you're buying the lower fat yogurts, they probably also have some added stabilizers and thickeners, just like the alternative yogurts, because they're not gonna be as creamy, they're not gonna have that full, rich mouthfeel like the whole milk yogurts. Once the yogurt has fermented, then you've got a choice. Do you want strained yogurt or regular yogurt? Regular yogurt, you know that texture. Strained yogurt is a little bit thicker. What they do, they take the yogurt and they put it in something like this, a sieve or over cheesecloth, or they spin it around in a centrifuge because we live in a world full of science. And in that case, what you get out of it is all of the whey and you get a lot of water out of it. So what you're left with is a very concentrated yogurt that's thicker, that's tangier, and that is higher in the remaining protein, which is mostly casein. So these thicker strained yogurts are super hearty. Also in the how is it made category is the sweetening factor. Some yogurts are left plain, but also some of them are sweetened with sugar, some are sweetened with honey, and obviously some of them have other flavors and fruits. So we've decided the animal. Now we have to decide what kind of texture and flavor do we want. We've tackled what? We've tackled how. Now we have to tackle the biggest cow in the room, where? Because these days, a casual browsing of the shelves at any grocery store will give you options uh, like Greek yogurt, Icelandic yogurt, Vietnamese yogurt, French yogurt, Bulgarian yogurt. The list goes on and on and on. And the real question is, do these yogurts actually come from those places? Now, the answer in most cases is no. I'm really sorry. Most of the yogurt that you're eating is made in America. But that doesn't mean there aren't differences in its origin story. So we're talking about yogurt. Now, the main ingredient we've really been talking about here is milk. But that other ingredient, the bacteria, super important. There's a lot of really friendly bacteria you can add. And actually, there's a lot of different kinds of bacteria that will ferment milk into yogurt. The reason so many different countries have their own kind of yogurt is because they actually have their own kind of bacterial strains. They are fermenting milk with their very own locally raised 
microorganisms, and that's kind of amazing. And though you may think that's like kind of weird and super unimportant, it's actually really important. Some bacteria work quicker, some bacteria leave the yogurt tangy, or some bacteria leave it sweeter, some bacteria leave it thicker, on and on and on. And every nation and every company has a proprietary blend of bacterial cultures, and that's super cool. At the end of the day, they're all spoonable, they're all delicious, and honestly, you should try your hand at making some at home, because guess what? You can buy cultures at any grocery store. It's super cool. Warm milk plus bacteria, you've got yogurt on your hands. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to share it with your friends and don't forget to comment below and tell me what you'd like to see in a future episode of Counterintelligence. And always, guys, subscribe!